This is going to be a video about some uh, chest, um, chest test with a snippet I made for Visual Studio. So we'll start out with the demo. Okay, so as you can see, this is going to be a test that we're going to end up creating. This is going to be our container. So this is going to be a connected component. So as you can see, we have a one test here that has a provider and a store, wraps it, header container passing in props. And then we expect to find this data QA target, which is a requirement I say everybody should use for as accessing certain elements. So there's a data QA target with header login form. If we go to header login form, we can take a look at this one. So here you can see we have a data QA target right here on the main div wrapper of header login form. And then you can see we're accessing that and it should be, we should only find one of them. And what mount does, mount actually gets this component, which is a smart component and it actually mounts it so it renders deeply. So it goes in and actually renders this whole thing and puts it to the JS DOM. So then we have access to all the elements within it. If we did shallow, it would just render just uh, either the render menu or the render dropdown, depending on the props we passed in. And we just have something like this right here, but without the children being rendered. So that's why we're using a mount. But let's create a new test and let's see an example of this working. So we'll go to a new file, say demo test. You can name it whatever you want, it just has to be test.js, whatever. And then we I created a snap or a snippet called JMS. And it's built out a test for mock store implementation, as you can see right here. So all we do is just hit enter. Now we have our test pretty much set up for us, but now we have a focus point of where we should put in our information. So what we want to do is we wanted to test our header login container. So it'll be header, and as you see, I type, it's actually filling in down here as well. Header login container, hit tab, which will take you to the next point that you need to fill in which is our component path. Our component path is going to be one up out of this, out of this uh, folder into this guy. So that's our header component. Hit tab again. It's going to take us to our describe. So what we want to do is we're going to uh, check UI elements. So let's just call it testing UI elements exist in logged in, out, state, and spinner state. So hit tab one more time. So now we're inside of the it, which is the first test we're gonna be doing. So it says should, so we'll say should render, so should render our header login form on logged out state. So should render form on logged out state. So if we hit tab again, we see there's nothing else, you know, there's nothing else left. So those are the elements that we have set up, but then there's a few things that we'll still need to do because you see that props is an empty object props here. So we need to make our snippet as generic as possible. So also the initial state's empty. We have a uh, empty props. So what we need to do is the initial state could stay empty. It doesn't really matter for this test, but uh, this does start off that way. But then what we want to do is this describe before each test, we want to create a mock store. So in order to create the mock store, we pass in the initial state, which is an empty object, and then our props here. And what we know about our props of what we need to be in a logged out state. So for a logged out state, what we need to do so when you look at our header login container we see here that it says this dot render props so we go look at render props 
account from props. So if account dot logged in status is true, render render menu, which is like a logged in state. But we want to do this one. We'll do the render logged in form. So account dot logged in status. So we need that to be false. So what we need is we need account, and then we need a logged in status. We need that to be false. And just for good measure, what else is in here? We also have account dot is request in progress. If it's true, it blurs out and it loads a spinner. And if it's false, then it doesn't. But we don't need we don't need the spinner here because this is the render login form. We go down here. See is is request in progress. Run the spinner, and then it also says up here for render drop down that if this is request in progress, we blur, which we don't want to do that. So let's go and just say things false by default. That just to be explicit, we'll say false here as well. So now we have our prop set up with our account. I'm going to put my brackets in here. So this is from an ES Lunter to Sigmore right now. I was just talking about spaces, but one thing I did find what we could do to fix this, do a, usually a command P on the Mac, just do a greater than sign and type in format. So then I already have it here. Just click on it and then it'll format your document. It'll get rid of most of the stuff. The same wrapper is assigned, value but never used. We'll use this here in a minute and see this line go away and so on and so forth. So now we have our prop set up. Our props are already passed in from our snippet. Our components are already set up from our snippet. So now we're good just to go in here and start writing our test. So here, what we want to do is we want to uh, render the form logout state. So remember before we said we had a data QA target. So what we already have is our wrapper. So we're already mounted. So we do have its children of this header login container. So what we can do is we can expect. So expect wrapper dot find. And remember it's a data QA target. So this is going to be a HTML attribute. So we have to use your square brackets data dash q a target equals double so make these single quotes on the outside which is usually what I am doing anyways but not this time okay so data qa target equals and then let's go back and let's look again what our data qa target was which was this guy copy him and then go back to our demo test paste that in. So if we're looking for this data QA target and it should only have one. So what we need to do is when you get the length of it and it should only have one. So two, so two B one. So could use two equals, but two B. So it's a, a exact comparison. So now that we have this running, so now what we can do is we can go and we can run our test to see if it's passing. So what you do is you type in jest if you have it, yeah, I think you should install this globally, globally in npm i dash g jest. And then uh, we have jest, and then what we do is we put in our demo test dot jest, and then it'll find it. But you have to make sure you're, I'm not inside of account right now. So now if I do the same thing again after I get inside of account, we should be, we should be good. Jest demo test, and now it's running our test. And it sees it passes. So this is the one that so you see we built our test up pretty fast for this guy by using that snippet, which is pretty nice. Well let's go in and let's create so what I did is I created another one. So we'll go and just delete this because this doesn't need to be there anymore because that was just for a demo. What I did is I created one called snapshot, and this is kind of the same thing. So uh, as example, I'll just push all this down. And what I did here, I did just snapshot. So you see it says just snapshot. We can name that something else. Let's talk about naming structures. But you hit enter, and then we can, you know, you have your component name, tab, tab, tab again, describe, tab again, it goes to it. 
and then it creates a just snapshot for you. So you don't have to go remember to bring in shallow or render, it just does all this stuff for you. So it's gonna make our testing uh, run a whole lot faster. So that's what I did to create this one. But I had to go in there and add my props because that's different for each test. And then I created more of these. So should match snapshot, logged out state, logged in state, and then in between state, which is the spinner. And then I just make sure that the JSON tree looks exactly the same for each one. And then whenever I ran that, it created these snapshots, which is just the JSON data. So that's what it came down to. So let's go and look, look and see what, how did I go and create these? Um, so how did I go in there and create these items? So let's take a look. So if you go to these uh, items as in what I'm saying, uh, how did I create these snippets? So go to code, go to preferences, user snippets, type in JavaScript. So there's JavaScript React for your JSX files, and then there's JavaScript.json for JavaScript files. But no, this your snippets for JavaScript.json will not work unless the file ends in .js. If your file ends in .jsx, then your snippets are going to be coming from the JavaScript React JSON. So let's take a look at the JavaScript JSON right here. This is the JavaScript one. So here's one for console log. Your prefix is what's going to be, you know, if you type in CL log, enter, it's going to spit out this console log, give you two areas that you tab into. But let's go, and this is the mock store uh, jest test, the J JMS one I demoed earlier. So you type in JMS, hit enter, spits all this stuff out. And you can see that this right here, this is gonna be the first one you go to, that's gonna be focused, this is gonna be the second one you focus, and third, and so on and so forth, here's fourth. And then you give a description. So that's all there is, and you just keep on adding more, and that's how you make a snippet. But I hope this video was helpful. Thank you.